Hey everyone, welcome to Visual Effects Artists React. Oh, we have some incredible clips. First off, A-list actors randomly on a blue screen? Oh, good <laughs> lord! <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, sir. Have you guys ever wondered what it would be like to die by having your multiverses unravel? Wow, I love it. There's so many ways to approach this because you know, you're looking at these incredibly high density, high detail simulations. I have a treat for you guys today. I have some of the greatest ocean visual effects in cinema history from Master and Commander. I must say that shot was amazing. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. We have a special bonus section today. It's called Sam's Video Game Unreal Engine Corner. Well, <laughs> it's a really hot corner to be in right now and I'll show you why. Today, I am declaring United States of America's first war on crime. So somebody in the comments suggested we should take a look at Public Enemies starring Johnny Depp looking for a janky head replacement shot. Ooh, I love those. You like it. Ooh, <laughs> whoa, that's uncanny, that's freaky. Is that like a 3D model? Yeah. Oh yeah, it is. I think what's so interesting about this one is that it's, it's such an unnecessary shot. It's not the VFX artist's fault, this is the director's fault for choosing to do a shot like that. They're like, Mr. Depp, jump over this. And he's like, no, and it's no. like, fine. You, stuntman, you do it, and we'll put your face on there later. People have been making movies for years, you have a stunt double, it's like, there's ways you film a stunt double, you yeah. know? Not like face incoming at camera. You could have just skipped that shot. Yeah. Hey, for all you know, like the VFX soup or producers like, it'll work, we got it. What is it about the face too? It's like dead eyes aside, it's- It's dead eyes, it's the dead skin. eyes. <laughs> the skin is like, it's, it's, there's no subsurface scattering yeah, at the end of the day. Yeah, nothing, it's just- It's got that waxy <laughs> Scorpion King vibe. Yeah. And what's funny too is if you just sit on a still, like after a while, it stopped being as uncanny to me. Yeah, totally. Like now that I've stared at it for a while, I'm like, yeah. That's the challenge. But the minute it moves, it's uncanny again. A lot of people probably just don't even notice it. Yeah. But, but how we, we notice it, we, I, I notice it immediately. To be fair, you are sitting on the couch filming a show called VFX Artist React. Your guard is up. <clears throat> no, I have, I have an idea. <laughs> Hold on, lower your guard real quick. Okay, I'm watching this movie, it's Michael Mann. I'm sick of watching this movie because it's filmed with digital cameras. Uh, but lower the guard, lower. The guard needs to be lower. But you don't know anything about digital cameras. I'm here yeah. You're with just someone here. very important to me and I don't want to be rude and leave the movie, so I'm just gonna watch it. All right, here here it is. All right, what's gonna happen? They're gonna rob this. Oh, I love bank robberies. Yes, Al Capone. Yes, Everybody cigars. On the floor. Mafia. Sweet. Yeah, the shot's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Problem solved. <laughs> Just lower the guard and the standards. That's it. And like, if there's no other CG in the movie, that one shot probably would not catch yeah. you. Yeah, it's just everything else. Like that. Yeah. yeah. Like random blue screen shot of Johnny Depp. Excuse me. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, sir. I noticed that. Yeah. But, uh, oh, good lord. Uh, good lord. What's happening here is they're on this set, yeah. which is a different set than the bank vault set. Guarantee it. They don't cut, and they go to the spot where the vault would be, which is just a blue screen, and they're comping in the vault. Again, right it's there. unnecessary. Decisions like that will cost you thousands of dollars. And it's like, is it worth thousands of dollars? Will people pay more money? Will we get more people to see this movie if you don't cut and spin the camera? Or if you just cut and we don't have to worry about doing visual effects? Yeah. Now Johnny Depp may not have needed a face replacement, but what you do need is a website replacement. And you can do that with today's sponsor, Squarespace. Now, many of you may not know, but I existed before I showed up on this channel. I was a real human in the real world. I was doing a lot of freelance visual effects. And if you're gonna sell yourself online, you need a website and I use Squarespace for mine. I have certain skill sets in design. Website is not one of them, but they got you covered there because they offer award-winning templates. Then you can customize your look, update the content, and add features to fit your unique needs. Now for me, it was visual effects, a skill set, but if you're not selling a skill set and instead selling a product, they still got you covered. You can sell your products on an online store. Whether you sell physical, digital, or service products, Squarespace has the tools you need to start selling online today. And if you have more to offer on your website, you can even create member-only areas where you can house all the real goodies, you know? One-on-ones, private courses, exclusive content. I did that with my eyebrows, but it doesn't have to be that kind. So if you are looking to start a website and grow your brand, Squarespace has you covered. You can hit that link in the description or head over to squarespace.com slash corridor crew for 10% off your first domain or website. And if that deal sounds unreal, wait till you see this. Public enemy, CG face, not so great. But I think if you didn't like those, I can show you something you do like. 
Have you guys seen this? No, no. Check this out. The hungry purple dinosaur. Whoa. I know that girl. Yeah, it's Sophia Lewis. The hungry purple dinosaur. Oh, wow. Dude, look at these freaking volume capture, face capture shots, man. The it's neck crazy. information, man. Look yeah. at them jiggling. That's crazy. Is it for sure CG, though? It's so for sure CG. This is based on the whole MetaHuman framework. I already thought the MetaHuman stuff was good. Like, they already figured out how to render it and make it look really nice. But I'm like, okay, this, is, this feels like this just got kicked up a whole nother level. So here, here's the question. Is this just volume capture of the face, like what they did in L.A. Noir, but in higher res? Which is cool, but frankly, pretty limiting. Because you have to have the actor inside this camera sphere, and they have to give a performance, which means you're by yourself, you're really forcing it. But if this is actually like a character model that's being driven with animation, like with yeah. motion captured animation, then it's, that's crazy. Seeing the skin flex and move yeah. over the skeleton beneath, because you know, this isn't like your surface. Your surface is underneath all of it. This is just like jiggly jello on top, like it's a plastic bag to hold it in place, you know? Like that's the physics that you need to put into a face to have it not be uncanny. And you know, no one does that. <laughs> yeah. But this old guy is the greatest example. You know, it's like his cheeks are jiggling and his jowls are jiggling. He's like, well, yeah. I'm acting and I'm having a monologue. And it's like, wow, well, everything feels alive, you know? That's why I think it's volume capture because the eyes are different, but everything else is that actor, which makes, makes me think, you know, maybe it is just a volume well, capture. I mean, it could be it. a volume capture to get the motion capture data yeah. to drive the separate model. Like that's a thing. Yeah. Like a lot of face capture these days are multiple cameras in front of your face, like two infrared. So you're always getting like two angles. So you can always make it more accurate. But when she amazing, when she screams man. like the shape of her mouth, you can't get that with like morph targets really. You have to like yeah. you have to get in there. But like then even like the muscles and the way the lips stretch, like I feel like you can only get that these days with volumetric capture. The way the lips the stick lips together. Stick. Yes, that's insane. Yeah. Well, did you see the blue dot thing that these guys made? The the, the reveal for the meta human animator. <sighs> Yeah, it already looks great. Yeah, it's insane. All right. So this is basically the last high profile thing that these guys did. And this is the reveal for the MetaHuman Animator app that came out. If I was going to criticize it, I'm not totally sure where I would start. You know, it's mostly one of those, oh, you know it's CG. Therefore, you're like, oh, well, it's CG. Staring into faces of passerby. Who should I ask all wet? This, though, like makes it out of the uncanny valley for me. I know it's not real. So I don't mean that it's tricking me like that, but I'm not uncomfortable watching this at all. I could watch a feature like this, no problem. Right. I could get fully invested in this guy. This looks good. It and looks great. Just like the Hideo Kojima trailer, they're both at that level where you're just like, even if I were to tell you it's all CG, it's like it stops mattering. It's such a jump what we just yeah. saw. I mean, this was such a jump from before. So maybe that's just how insanely exponential this thing has gotten. Is there anything behind the scenes of this? Is there like... Nothing. It's, it's, cla the teeth. it's classic the teeth. Hideo Kojima stuff where they're like, here's something, no context. Yeah. And then you're like, two years later, it's like, it's like, ah, oh, finally. <laughs> you know? I, like, I honestly, I really want to figure out how they made this. And if you do too, well, subscribe because once it's revealed, <laughs> We'll tell you. I think it's worth pointing out too, like Sam's been actually experimenting with these new animation systems and posting shorts on the Corridor channel. Yeah, and even though Starfield, you know, is way past its prime, <laughs> which is crazy considering it came out this year. Uh, but, you know, I still had a lot of fun playing it, and so we made some shorts about Starfield. So if you've played that game, or enjoy it, or even like Bethesda games at all, I think you'd be in on the joke, and they're on the Corridor channel. Check them out. I've been pulled through time. I think you guys, just like me and a lot of other people, are just a little burnt out on Marvel. But every time I open up a Marvel thing, it's like the, the effects, the design, everything is still just like, it's so top level. And I saw some comments saying we should check out the ending of Loki season two. The ending? Spoilers? Oh. So they have the, the master loom, which weaves the threads of the multiverse together. And they have a way of representing death on the show, which is basically the fabric of your reality coming undone. Scientists say this, by the way. If your multiverse oh, is mess with too oh, much, shoot. scientists say it. The very threads of your fabric of reality can become unraveled. Uh oh. That's crazy. Scientists say that, dude. Uh, this is, so this is real. Yeah. My, my. Oh, funky, man. Ooh, I love it. Yeah. Wow, I love it. Dude, glass noodles. It looks very cool. So cool, so unique. I think it's getting hairy. Oh, 
no, he's hairy too. <laughs> oh, shoot. It's like a Gillette commercial. <laughs> Dude, I love the light coming out of the TV. Oh my gosh, wow. It's kind of mesmerizing, isn't it? And I really like they make the world actually spin here, so the, the threads follow the spin. These are some nice ass shots. <laughs> There's so many ways to approach this because you know, you're looking at these incredibly high density, high detail simulations. And realistically, if you're using like quote unquote consumer software to do this, you're probably gonna use like hair physics basically. Mm -hmm. But then this is still on that whole other level. It's like, how do you get to move properly mm -hmm. and then dissolve and all that stuff. And just, there's so many challenges. Like the way it matches the environment and the tonality and the lighting in the environment so perfectly. Like the highlights, the roll offs, the reflections. Now is there like a mastery of animation and execution and simulation and scripting, but also like the color science and the compositing. It's just like, like they're the, like the lens, the out of focus nature of the glass. The glass in noodle form, feeling like it has the same physical characteristics as the actual physical glass that was there. When you get to this kind of level with this kind of intensity, it's no longer really a visual effect in my mind. It is data manipulation. I mean, there really are like scientists and engineers who are designing this in tandem with artists. It's, it's really the hybrid of science and art. It reminds me of the fact that there's a completely different class of visual effects artists out there that I <laughs> yeah. do not interact with on a day-to-day -day basis. <laughs> Nor do we frankly have here at the studio. No one, yeah. no one really quite is at that level where, yeah. you know, you, we're so used to opening visual effects software and going like, I wonder what this button does, I wonder what this button does. And then you have people like this who go like, I make the buttons. Yes, yes, <laughs> yes, I could not agree more, dude. This is the pinnacle of a comic books being turned into like TV uh -huh. shows and movies. And it's so funny that we're so jaded about it now because we've been given so many gifts. What it really comes down to is if you have a really good team, you make good directors, producers, supervisors, artists, and you're all talking to each other and you're all communicating mm. and you're there with each other every step of the way, I don't think feel like you step backwards too often unless it's something where all of you together are like, we can do better, let's step backwards mm. together. I'm glad you said that about the direction mm. because the director really does drive the cohesiveness of the visual effects and the scope of the story, so mm -hmm. to speak. Because it's very easy, especially <laughs> nowadays, for the visual effects scope to get out of control yeah. and just be used for everything. But when you have a director who has <clears> a very specific vision and doesn't want to lean on that crutch, you can typically get really good results. Yeah. Which, oh, perfect segue, whoops. Uh, <laughs> Master and Commander. A <laughs> <laughs> hunter becomes the hunted. Well then, that's not a moment to lose. Master Commander came out in 2003. Epic concept, Peter Ware was the director. In 2003, they didn't have the, the crutch of CGI and crazy ocean simulations and stuff to lean on, so they had to be really creative in how they did this. And it's some of the best looking ocean stuff I've seen. Dude, already the rotoscoping looks like a nightmare. <laughs> It looks like the real thing. It does, it does. Uh, that, that shot is good. Look at it, there he is. Now, I must say, that shot was amazing. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. How do you get the camera to smoothly roll through this? That's gotta be a comp shot. Those waves aren't there when they got this shot. He is just standing on a boat in a pool. Yeah, you know, they're not over the radio, <laughs> and like in the middle ski. of like one of the worst storms, being like, <laughs> action! <laughs> lean farther out! Wait for the big wave, Russell Crowe, lean farther out! I love how it's low visibility too. Like you really get that low visibility, like dizziness and the fog. Man, the water. Wow. That's all comp water. Look at those ropes, dude. Freaking ropes. Oh, Nightmare. Man. Somebody's comp it, like having to cut them out. Wow, that shot. <laughs> Look at that shot, what? man. My, my. Look at that. That must be a mini. This sequence looks just fantastic. Doesn't it? The producers were leaning towards doing it all digitally. The director put his foot down and he said, no. No, this needs to be grounded. The visual effects cannot draw attention. We need to do it practically. Mm -hmm. So they spent 10 days total filming out on the water. And then they turned to Weta Workshop, who were just working, I think, on the time or had just finished Return of the King. Weta Workshop designed a 1-6 model replica of the ship on a gimbal on, that they shot on blue screen. And then they have the PSD Resistance. They built to scale another HMS surprise. Wow. Surprise. Wow. You look surprised. <laughs> wow. They built Triplets. an entire another one Both from the heads. ground up. Wow. But this it's one not exists. Top down? Not top down, ground up. Okay. And this one exists in the same tank that they built to film Titanic on a gimbal so they can literally direct it however they need to for all the wide shots. It's insane. It's nuts, man. They did not use blue screen for this stuff. For all of the large scale stuff, they just said, F it, we're going to roto it. Because sometimes blue screen can be more headache than it's worth. 
You know what I mean? If you're seeing the edges, if you're seeing the rigging, like that becomes a bit of a nightmare. So I think they just they just said, look, let's just roto it. And then we're getting like actual proper light wrap. We're getting everything as it should be in camera. And, and we'll let someone else worry about it down the line, bless their heart. So supposedly there were like a ton of viewings of this as, as it was going on. And when he would see sequences with visual effects inside, sometimes there were incredible wow moments for people. Mm. And he didn't like that because he's like, okay, yeah, it looks amazing, but let's dial it back because the story needs to be the thing that sits on the surface of these visual effects the yeah. entire time. We can't have any breakouts that cause you to leave the theater going, did you see that wave shot? No, yeah. you would be talking about the story. If you want to support what we do, go subscribe at CorridorDigital.com. We post these episodes a day early there and with extended content. They're each about half an hour long. So yeah, go check it out. CorridorDigital.com. Bye. 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 <laughs> I kind of like that. <laughs>